Hey garden friends, today we are out, being buzzed by a bee on the hollyhock, to talk about hollyhocks. This is to correspond with the post I have on my blog, and I just wanted to share with you some tips and tricks for growing hollyhocks successfully. One of the first steps in growing your hollyhocks successfully is choosing a spot that gets full sun for at least six to even eight hours per day. If you don't place your hollyhocks in a spot that gets six to eight hours per day, they will tend to lean towards the sun and or flop. And so if you have a spot that's not exactly perfect, but you do want to grow hollyhocks there, just know that you will have to stake them to keep them upright, right. especially when they get top heavy. And I'll show you what it looks like when they start to reach for the sun and or get too top heavy and it rains and it tends to bring them to the ground. Here is a perfect example of some hollyhocks that should have been staked up long before now. And as you can see, the poor things are toast. Well, this is what happens if they're not staked and they get too top heavy. They bloom from the bottom to the top. And so you can see how once they are blooming towards the top, they begin to get a wee bit top heavy and then want to flop to the ground. So here's one right here. Perfect evidence. You see the flower there? at the top and the plant is beginning to lean. Plus we got some rain last night, some unexpected rain. So that is why some of these flopped. Let's talk about pests and diseases. Around here, the most notable problem with hollyhocks is rust. Now you can see, let me move my butterfly bush out of the way. You can see what it does to the leaves. You see that? That is hollyhock rust. And I usually come through and I cut off all the leaves as they're starting to develop this. I just haven't made it to these ones yet. Um, and a lot, I just cut them off and that seems to not be as prevalent later. I got some stink bugs on here. Um, in the season, you'll notice these ones up here are less affected, if you can see that up there, I'm not sure. But sometimes, um, in the spring, if it's really bad, I'll just cut them off and they reflush new growth and the new growth won't always be affected. And, or I just let them grow and I cut off the affected leaves and then let, the, let them go ahead and bloom. Also, um, pests. Pests I don't have a lot of trouble with. I used to have some kind of bug that would eat the seeds um, and get in that, but all I would do would be to collect the dried seeds that had made it. I would put them in a baggie and throw them in the freezer and that would kill out the bugs. So then the next seeds didn't have as uh, the bugs in them. And so that is, I don't even know what it was. It could have been a weevil or something that was affecting it. But some say aphids. Um, I know spider mites have been a problem, but I, they haven't seemed to have affected my hollyhocks. Uh, so I don't get, plagued with many bugs, even though I had a couple, they look like stink bugs or squash bugs on there, but they're not on my squash. So I'm not sure exactly what they may be. Because of the rain we had last night, we don't normally get rain in the summer, in August especially, um, but we're being affected by Hurricane Hillary here in Northern California. And though we don't expect any flooding or anything here, we are getting some rain and last night we got some winds. So I'll show you the damage from that in a minute. So this is the damage I was telling you about from the winds last night as Hillary's moving in to California. So we had winds and rain. Fortunately, there's not a whole lot in there right now because I've been cleaning it out, um, getting it ready, and we are getting ready to repair it. Um, so it's all good, but it was kind of a shocker to wake up and see that this morning. At least it's not snowing. 
I was just looking back here behind this bench, there was, I had these, they're called peaches and dreams, hollyhocks last year. And they were this fluffy, peachy pink color, just like pom-poms on a stick, whipping cream. Um, and I was curious to see if they had put out any seeds before the gophers ate them. I have a real problem with gophers, you know that. And last year they came through and decimated, about this time of year, all of my hollyhocks. This year I haven't had an issue with them so far, but that doesn't mean they won't come through and make a problem. I think I'm gonna get seeds from all the ones I have right now, but they're all singles. And I'm gonna go ahead and get some seeds for the doubles. Um, there's Chater's Mix, there's the Peaches and Dreams, there's all kinds of named doubles. Uh, they're not as great for the pollinators as the singles, but they are beautiful to have in your garden and just such an elegant looking flower. And they, they create height and I liked that in this section behind me. Winter sowing is a great way to start hollyhocks. You can get a whole bunch in, I use the milk jugs and or water jugs. Um, you can sow practically an entire packet in it and then divide them out into separate individual little pots once they get of a size to transplant. But that is a super easy way to get a lot. And or you can wait until it's time to put them out in the garden and do it that way. I also like indoor sowing, but I have such limited space for the amount that I do that um, hollyhocks, since they grow so easily directly in the soil and or winter sowing, I don't usually start them indoors, but you may wish to. So I've crawled back in here to talk about deadheading and or pruning. Now this, these two, three, pink hollyhocks is still blooming a little bit, but it's flopping terribly. So I want to, I wanted to save seeds from this one, but I can do it, save seeds from the pink ones in the front garden the front garden where um, I started this video. So I'm just gonna take my pruners. I brought the big loppers just in case these were big, but I think they're not, they're gonna be fine. Now I'm gonna take them down to probably three feet tall and I'm just going to cut them back since they are just flopping so terribly and not really adding anything pretty to the garden. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut off all these affected leaves. Now there is, I don't know if it's one plant with, it looks like one plant with several stalks. That's what it looks like. So, like I said, I'm just cutting off the nasty leaves. I have it tied up to the butterfly bush. Um, I think I can untie that and I'll use this for something different. Throwing those out over there. I'm cutting off where the old blooms had been. See, it's got the little seed pods on it. Those seeds are not viable yet, so I'm gonna just chop these ones further back. I'll come back and pick up all of those. And I will show you a plant or a hollyhock that I had done this to a couple weeks ago, maybe even just one week ago, and what it's doing at this moment. Now, this will, I will get another bloom out of this, and it won't be as tall, but it will be pretty. And since this isn't a spot, what is this? Oh, it's part of my butterfly bush. Let me cut that out, because it keeps getting in the way and I don't like it. Anyways, so this will put out new growth and will bloom again, just shorter. And that's okay, because where it's at, it will still be visible and still be beautiful. So that's how I prune back um, the hollyhock in the summer. In the spring, I do it when it's very short, it's rusty, um, and then I get new growth. And I will show you another one, as I said, that I did this a while back, and I'll show you how healthy the leaves are. And it was full of rust when I pruned it back. Forgive my ugly hoses here in the way, I'm still setting up my irrigation system, but this is the one, this is a beautiful, I think it's a white one. I'm not sure what, no, maybe it was red. I can't remember, I'll have to look at a past video where it was in, but this one I pruned back probably a week, maybe two ago, and look how it's reflushed, new leaves, 
new healthy leaves. There's not any sign of rust on any of them. Let me scooch you down a little more to show you all the way to the base. No rust. But also, if you will notice, there are blooms beginning right in here. So this will bloom. It'll bloom about this height. It may get a little bit taller, but that's fine. At this height, it's still pretty. I didn't want a hollyhock here. I just let it go because, well, I just did. Sometimes I do that. I let them bloom as they will. So um, that is how I deadhead and prune. I, I mentioned putting some hollyhock, starting some hollyhock seeds in the back. But I thought also along this fence in patches, it would create height. I do have climbing roses uh, near the posts you see sticking up. I'm still planning on putting a piece of wood across the top of those posts, connecting them, and have the roses climb up over that. But until those roses get tall enough, I really think that some pretty pink and white hollyhocks or even the black ones. There's a black one that is a, a perennial hollyhock that is just gorgeous. And I think that drama along here, further hiding our vehicles, which we park up here, uh, would be just gorgeous. And when I start seeds, I put three or four in a spot in the direct sow them in the soil and then let them come up. I do it in the fall or late summer. I should say late summer rather than fall because you notice a lot of my hollyhocks are going to seed. Therefore, if they drop their seeds, this would be the time of the year nature plants them. And I get so many volunteers that I figure if that's when nature thinks it needs to be done, then so will I. And then I've had the most success in mimicking nature in seeding plants in my garden, direct sowing. So that's one of the spots I'm thinking of putting some hollyhocks. So in my garden, I've never really specifically fertilized hollyhocks. Now sometimes when you over fertilize, and a lot of times many gardeners do, um, it promotes such lush tender growth that that's also you'll get a less sturdy plant. So you want to be judicious in what you do. For me, I compost and I leave it at that with the hollyhocks. I do not fertilize through the season and I get beautiful growth. So um, I can't tell you one way or another whether you need to fertilize. If you've regenerated your soil, as I said before, fertilization is not usually necessary. So there you have it, my friends, how to grow beautiful hollyhocks in your garden, how to treat some problems you may have. And I hope you enjoy adding hollyhocks to your cottage garden.